Arcade games are a special breed, and in this video we're going to talk about my favorite in-game mechanics, gimmicks, and features included in them, and how they impact gameplay. Obviously, I don't need to rank core features like upgrading, customizing, and obviously racing, because those are literal expectations of an arcade game. Instead, we're going to focus on the various spices or extra gimmicks added to the arcade games that aren't technically needed. So here we go, ranking every arcade racing game gimmick. Driving in oncoming traffic to get more nitrous, boost, or even just points, this to me is one of my favorite gimmicks in an arcade game because it rewards you for the stupid, deep, dark side of you that wants to be absolutely balls to the wall, extremely risky, and just, just really stupid and throwing yourself at traffic, and honestly, I'm all for that. This is probably one of my favorite features, and it really, really allows players to get rewarded for doing something risky, which usually leads into building more risky habits throughout the games, and it keeps the pacing of of most games pretty action-packed and also decently frustrating the few times that you are trying to go over a hill and lo and behold there's traffic and oncoming and you smash right into it. But hey, is that going to teach you a lesson to stop driving and oncoming to get more nitrous? Of course not, you're still going to do it and that's why I love it, S tier. Nitrous. Nitrous is not a necessity to make an arcade racer. There are plenty of arcade racing games that don't have nitrous or some form of boost, and by boost I don't mean forced induction, I mean a button that you press to make your car go artificially faster. Games that don't feature boost that are still great games would obviously be something like Forza Horizon, or the plethora amount of indie racers that also just don't really use it. However, a game that makes a good use of nitrous can make it really shine and come out to its own. In my opinion, most most the haha press button go fast. I would rank most nitrous systems in most games probably anywhere from a C plus to maybe an A minus. I definitely think over the years nitrous went from being a groundbreaking mechanic to be more so just a lazy cop out, an excuse to not have to actually code against rubber banding and blah 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 yada yada yada. I'll tell you which systems I think are good and bad I guess. In games like Need for Speed Heat or games that have the bottle mechanic, for example instead of you holding a continuous boost button, you actually are consuming a fixed amount of boost each time, even having to choose the amount of shot that is getting used in it. I would consider this probably an A system of nitrous. This is a very cool use of nitrous that requires you to think. Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition also had a very similar type of nitrous mechanic. Having limited uses of nitrous helps a lot with the game's pacing and makes it feel more like an oh type of reliance instead of a haha -ha button go burr cargo little faster. Having it be limited also means it's usually a lot more powerful. For example, if, if you go with the lower use but higher potency, like more shot, more boost, nitrous and need for speed heat, you're getting really, really nice boost from it when you push the button and that really just fills the dopamine and the satisfaction in your brain. You know, everything is firing off. Moving on is jumping slash ramps. Going in the air is always haha -ha funny and for for the sake of haha -ha funny and the stupid things that follow after, I'm okay with this, so I consider it an S tier, because nitrous I'm really picky about, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it and how it's implemented, but with jumping it's just brain dead monkey mode, haha -ha, I'm going airborne, and there's something very easy, simple, and it could even be slower, I don't care, I'm still hitting that ramp. A rewind mechanic. The rewind gimmick to me, hmm, this is gonna be controversial. Get good. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I never, ever, ever use this mechanic. I always like it when games give you incentives to not use this. Like, for example, Forza will actually give you extra credits after each race if you never use your rewind mechanic. And because of that, I just don't use rewind. Whether it's the Crew 2, whether it's Grid, whether it's literally any racing game, if it's available, I just don't use it. Because I learn a lot not using it because it, it really forces you to come into your own and become a better player by not relying on this. Power-ups to me belong in most go-kart racing games. They're not really super, like, I don't know how I feel about them in regular arcade racers. Midnight Club 3 did have things like Zone and Roar and whatnot, but I personally wouldn't miss not having them. I know Grand Theft Auto 5 also inherits a lot of Midnight Club 3's power-ups by proxy, but just having boxes or power-ups scattered around the map and having to drive into them, to me this is a B-, minus. you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I guess some of them are funny to use. The main issue of power 
comps is always just the feeling that it feels a bit cheatsy when you're playing for other players because there is a level of RNG involved obviously with what power up they get and what item they get and so on and so forth. Weapons. They can be well done or poorly done. This is very similar with Nitrous but overall I'd rank it as less important than Nitrous. I'd give weapons a B plus because unlike Nitrous which if done well can be an A which is basically close to being an absolute necessity in a game because something that's considered an S tier to me is something I consider a necessity in the game. Weapons on the other hand you really don't need weapons in an arcade racer. But some of my favorite weapons that I think work really well, especially in the universe of Need for Speed, are EMPs and spike strips and jammers, and also being able to just spontaneously summon a helicopter out of nowhere to chase down your foes. I, I, I don't know why, that's just super hilarious to me, and I actually genuinely enjoy these mechanics. Most of the bread and butter, with especially with EMPs and spike strips, to me, really is entertaining. I really, really like having to plan around them. I like having to deal with these, deploying these, countering these, and the extra thought that it takes to go into using these weapons weapons feels like there is a level of skill and planning. It doesn't feel like power-ups where it's just kind of luck based. The arcade use of weapons, especially in like games that literally have weapon weapons like guns especially, where you're literally shooting at your opponents, you have to still aim and that little addition of skill makes it where I tolerate the existence of weapons far better than power-ups. Oh boy, this one's gonna be a doozy. Drift to turn, AKA power slide. If we're talking about drifting in general, I would obviously give that an S tier. I would consider that something a bona fide literal necessity in any arcade racer. However, if we're talking about the concept of power sliding, which usually means when a game makes it faster to drift than to take the corner regularly, so much to the point that it becomes carbon levels of insane, hmm. Most people like to kind of just turn off their brains, tap the brake and shove their car into the corner. Like I think Need for Speed Heat has some of my favorite drift and grip mechanics for an arcade game. I would give Forza Horizon pretty good points for this too. I think Forza Horizon makes drifting a really nice choice when you're doing off-road builds and some street builds. It's more of a show thing to do for street, but I don't think it's completely off the table in Forza Horizon. You can still drift as a choice. So for me, drifting, I would basically give it anywhere from a D to an S, believe it or not. That's it's actually how much it can vary. It can really ruin a game if it's overpowered or just poorly implemented and it can really cement a game if it was implemented well and if it feels satisfying. Crash cameras. I don't know actually, I, this, this is gonna be a very personal pick. I'd give, I never grew up liking, I guess, vehicular gore. I don't think it's funny or cool to watch cars smash together and metal go everywhere. For some reason I value machines probably more than I do living things at times. I'd rather see a bunch of cute bunnies get stepped on than classic cars get crushed. And that is just a really weird aspect about me and because of that I don't enjoy crash cameras. They kind of just show off like, little kid me I guess might have been too early exposed to the more mortality of actually crashing and dying where I don't enjoy crashing in video games like at all like it's just not fun for me I don't care about car damage I especially don't care when the camera wastes 10 seconds of my life to show me it even if it's a game where the crash damage is perfectly executed blah 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 good angles even if it's part of the game like you even get points for doing it like in games like Wreckfest and whatnot I, I don't get it some people it satisfies that monkey brain thing I just told you about which is why I can't give this like a D or F because I can see how some people think it's cool like I guess some little kids grow up smashing their toy cars together and or biting and chewing apart metal because I know my brother did that he was a weirdo when he was a kid and who am I kidding some of you guys probably did that where you would actively destroy real life toy cars cars and then when you get a video game to do it it's like much cheaper and it's just funny I guess I don't know for some reason it just doesn't do it for me I think it genuinely annoys me <laughs> especially need for speed hot pursuit or like that style of game I loathe crash cameras I would rather just let me hey you crashed all right back out of the boulder you hit like I would rather take the rewind mechanic over the crash camera that's probably how bad it's getting so because I want to get back to the racing I don't care about the oh my gosh look at your car wow man Ooh. And that is usually because they go hand in hand with the next feature in this video, which I'm going to give the absolute F tier. I'm going to tell you it right from the bat. I don't give a crap. There's no way any of you guys actually like this. Auto driving during cutscenes. <laughs> Auto 
AI is auto driving it for you until the cutscene or camera thing is over. Burnout Paradise also does this as well. If your car crashes in a crash camera or you crash someone else, like you do a takedown. But the problem with these takedown cameras or anything that takes away focus from your car is because it's so busy showing you the camera slash cutscene, you're unable to drive your car because like you're not able to see where you're going. Doing any inputs wouldn't make any sense. So the game just drives your car for you. Oftentimes the AI sucks. They just completely suck at driving your car. I've lost a lot of missions in my childhood, even as an adult, who am I kidding? In Hot Pursuit, it locks your car's movement even after the crash camera's over and even after you come out of everything. Like the AI will still have control of your car sometimes up to two whole seconds. Like sometimes it's one second, sometimes it's a fraction second. Sometimes you get control right away. It just depends on how long the crash camera was. But in the instances where it's two whole seconds, it feels disgusting. Like you'll be pushing every button ever, but the AI is just driving your car for you bother actually like making an AI drive it in between the whole time because it's just going to crash into something or promptly crash into something right after it or set me up to crash into something right after it because it'll point me directly at the wall. This is a really weird thing to hate and a really specific thing but don't worry it still gets worse than this. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you like automotive and car content, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like this video. If you like me rambling on about video games, make sure to check out these other videos I made about video games. Other than that though, thanks for watching. See y'all next time. Blade Angel out.